We're the Dutton family, members of Saving Grace. Enjoy our service today. Good morning. Welcome to worship this beautiful Sunday morning. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, and um, the sermon is entitled, Everything's Changed, because the snow is finally melting, so that's good. <laughs> and uh, why don't we stand as we begin our worship together? Begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And let's pause for a moment of self-reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean and have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you who do truly repent and believe in Jesus Christ, the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, also with you. and let us pray. Almighty God, we have celebrated with joy the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to show the power of the resurrection in all we say and do. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uh, Veterans Spaghetti uh, Benefit Dinner is coming up, and uh, Sofas for Service, uh, that's going to be, uh, Sofas for Service provides us furniture and household items for veterans in need. And that's going to be held on Saturday, April 21st, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. There's a silent auction as well. Tickets are $10 for adults, and 12 and under are $5.00. And uh, if you would like to take spaghetti as a takeout, you certainly may do that as well. Um, there's a little uh, video that we have on uh, fifth anniversary coming up. Did you realize it's already been five years that we've been over here in this building starting it, our new church? It hardly seems possible. And the council's been talking about having a starting off a kickoff for the capital campaign fund. I think that'd be a great idea. Why don't we have a dinner? Oh, I don't want to cook. I don't either. Well, let's see. We'll we'll ask Arnie. He'll do it, right? Right. Arnie and the men will do it. We can volunteer Raleigh and all them guys. They'll do it for there us. There you go. That sounds like a really a good idea. All right. Let's plan a menu and, and let's we'll go for it. Them. Now, are we going to sell tickets? Oh, well, yeah. We have to sell tickets. How much? $12. That sounds like a good deal to me. Uh, what? When is this? The date will be April 28th. And that really is great because that was the when we had our first uh, worship service at Stokes and Mutz on April 28th, 2013. 5.30 with hors d'oeuvres. Right. Again, the cocktail hour. Yes. Okay. And then the meal at 6.30? 6.30. Sounds wonderful. What about... The little kids, what are we going to do with them? Well, we'll do it. We'll have to see if we can't get the confirmation or the youth to um, have them and, and we'll feed them and do something exciting with them in the Jacob mm -hmm. room. God has watched over us and blessed us. We're thankful we have Pastor Ergen who preaches the right message. And you got to remember to include Mike because he's starting to preach more too. I'd like to see him do it twice this month. Instead of just sitting there with the camera in his hand, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> There is.
Sanders, uh, Soup Sanders in Scripture has started up again every, every uh, Friday at 12 noon. We have great soup and then an inspirational uh, spiritual message. The first lesson is from Acts uh, chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned land or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as had any need. The word of the Lord. Be, and the second lesson is from the epistle, First uh, John chapter 1, verses 1 through chapter 2, verse 2. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed as we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he has he himself is in the light. We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. It was evening on, the first, on that first day, first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. And Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw that it was the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written 
so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, <clears throat> do you like change? Who likes change? Oh, that's good. That's really good. Um, I'm not crazy about change, you know? I'm just not crazy about change. I like it when things are the same and they're predictable. And um, you know what's going to happen next. I, I remember I, my brother came and visited me. Um, I... Uh, he didn't like the way that my rooms were arranged, so he rearranged the furniture. And I remember later that night, I didn't flip on the, the uh, lights. And you betcha, I had so I needed shin guards. That's what I needed. Unbelievable. You know, we, we are creatures of habit, though. Do you, uh, where did you park this morning? In the same sp spot you usually do? I did. <laughs> that you're sitting in almost the same spots that you normally do which is kind of nice because I know exactly who's here. <laughs> That's we, what we are. We're creatures of habit. It's a comfort thing, you know. In the morning, it's kind of nice to have oatmeal, you know. At least that's what Magnus likes oatmeal now. So, And I like oatmeal, so I make a double portion, and then I can separate out some for me, and it all works out good until Magnus wants to change, you know. And then um, he gets tight-lipped. And, and then if he doesn't want any, he goes like this. He's all done. I'm teaching him sign language, so that's all right. And then, uh, and then on top of it, if I don't get that, then he starts going like this. <laughs> he likes a little variety, I think, you know? At MIT, they did a little study on change. They said that 90% of people follow routine that is sometimes very complex, but it's so predictable that simple mathematical equation can predict what they will do next. Isn't that amazing? 90% of us follow the same routine. And the truth is, an Alzheimer's study said that um, it is actually good to change up your routine. So if you shave your face one way, which I'll bet you normally shave your face in that same way, that you should try to shave it differently. Or you should try to sit in a different place. Or or change just one little aspect. Or when you go to a movie theater, instead of sitting in that same chair, which is the perfect chair, but instead of sitting in that chair, you should try a different chair. Try a little different viewpoint. Change is difficult, though. Oli uh, had uh, just heard that uh, Sven bought a new truck. This is pretty sweet. You know, whenever a Norwegian buys something new, that's pretty good. So uh, he had to go over and look it over. And he went over there and he looked at his truck. There were dents all over it. Couldn't see Sven, didn't know where he was. He heard some noise and he went behind and there Sven is laying on the ground. He said, uh, Sven, you, did you get a good deal on this truck? He said, oh yeah. He said, there was a hailstorm. So I, the salesman gave $50 off. Yeah, pretty good deal. <laughs> And he said, all I have to do, I figured it out, all I have to do is blow in this tailpipe and I'll blow out all the dents. <laughs> he said, but I've been sitting here for two hours trying it. It's not working, he said. Well, Ole says to Sven, you dummy. He says, you got to close the windows first. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. So I have a dent in my car. I'm going to try that later this afternoon. I'll tell you if it works. The doors were shut. The doors were shut for fear of the Jews, see. They were locked on top of it. Just a week, a week earlier or so, the, the, uh, Jesus came into Jerusalem triumphantly. Entering into Jerusalem, he was going to be the king of Israel. That's what the disciples expected. They fought about it a little bit before that. Sometime before that, they said, well, who's going to sit at his right hand? And now he was dead. They saw it happen. They knew it happened. And on top of it, when they heard from Mary that someone had stolen his body and they ran 
to take a look, they found out that their worst fears were realized. For as yet they didn't understand the scriptures, that he must rise from the dead. And then Mary, on top of it, she comes back to them and says, you know what? No, an, an angel of the Lord told me that uh, he's risen. He's gone ahead of us to Galilee. You're to see him there. But the doors were locked for fear of the Jews because they still didn't see and believe. And so they were afraid, afraid that the same thing that happened to Jesus would happen to them. And in the midst of that, Jesus comes and stands among them and says, peace be with you. Common greeting in, among the Hebrews, you would say, shalom, peace be with you, or may it all be well with you, it means. And then he says again, peace be with you. He says that to emphasize that he's not only saying, I want peace for your life right now, but I want peace in your life forever and ever and ever. See? Because I'm risen and everything has changed. All the law has been fulfilled. Everything that you ever dreamed of has been fulfilled. All the laments of the Psalms have been fulfilled. And, and the truth is, everything has changed. You'll never look at the world the same. Receive the Holy Spirit, he says, and he, he breathes upon them, and then, then he says, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Only God can do that. But now G Jesus gives the power of the Holy Spirit into these disciples' lives so that they might forgive the sins of others, and they might know the freedom, the fulfillment, the peace that only he can give. Thomas wasn't with him. And he said, I, I just, he was beside himself. Unless I see it, I'm not going to believe it. Unless I put my finger in, in the, the nails in his hands and, and my hand in his side, I, I won't believe it. Too disappointing. And a week later, now the doors are only shut. They're not locked for fear of the Jews. And Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Shalom. Not only for right now, but forever and ever and ever. And then he says to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Put your hand in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Only God can know that. Thomas responds the only way, or the only way that he can. He says, "My Lord, my God." You see, when Jesus comes, he brings a peace that isn't temporary. It's forever, and ever, and ever. And he guides our lives so that we might trust in him all the more. And and the truth is, today he's speaking to those who have never seen him and yet believe. Blessed are you who have not seen and have come to believe. Isn't that amazing? Now there are many other, many other things, many other signs that took place in the presence of the disciples. It's, they're not even written in the scriptures, it says. But these have been written so that you might believe in, in Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Now I talked to a, a fellow that was, that's Jewish, and um, he's a Christian. And uh, we had a wonderful conversation yesterday talking about faith and that Jesus is the Messiah. He's the fulfillment of everything that was promised. He said it's too bad that, that, uh, that the churches don't teach more about the Old Testament and the fulfillment of all those promises so that we can rest on those. We, we know that Christ has come and, and uh, he has fulfilled all the law. I remember Andrea Antonson, I asked her once, she's, she's Jewish, and, and, she's, and I said to her, I said, what, what does it mean to you that you're a Christian? She thought for a little while, and you know what she said? I'm a Jew and more. Isn't that great? Because I know the Messiah has come. We've been, we've been waiting for him, and he's come. And I believe. 
Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The resurrection of Christ means that this peace is now in fulfillment. That we can have it in every aspect of our lives and every single day of our life. Did you know that the Psalms are are full of laments? And one of those laments is from Psalm 22. It says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus says this from the cross. And if you read on, it says, why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning. It's Walter uh, Pannenberg that says this. He says, at this moment upon the cross, Jesus takes the full sin of all the world upon him, and God who is holy cannot even look upon him. And so there is a separation between God and, and God, God's Son. And at that moment, he feels the full weight of death itself. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Don't think for a second that he hasn't entered into our pain. Because they knew each other every single thought for all of eternity. And he did this for us. That he might be separated from God so that he would know the pain of death as well. It goes on to say this. Now, any, any Jew that was standing around the cross would know this because they would recite the Psalms. But in verse 3 it says, Yet you are, in th- are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, know, you, our ancestors, trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried, and they were saved, and you they trusted, and were not put to shame. When Jesus says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's saying all of that. You are holy. You're enthroned in the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted, and you delivered them. You they were saved. All of that, as he says it from the cross, proclaims his faith. But he knows that God always has the victory. And so even in our lives, as we go through our routines, and sometimes our routines have things in it that that we shouldn't normally do, uh, we hear what we ought to do. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. His word is not in us. But you know what? We all sin. And if we do sin, it says, we have an advocate with the Father. That is Jesus Christ, the righteous. Isn't that great? He's the one that stands between us. He's our advocate. He advocates for us. He says, no, this is my child whom I have claimed. This one is mine. He is forgiven. She is forgiven because I have claimed her as my own. I am the righteous one, and my righteousness I lay upon them. He helps us to understand forgiveness and peace, not only now, but forever and ever and ever. And so even in the laments, when they they cry about a situation of sickness or loneliness or a sense of abandonment or danger or, or the threat of enemies or shame or humiliation or even death itself, in the midst of that, God is always the promise or the fulfillment of all of those fears that he will bring things uh, back into the way that they are supposed to be. That's exactly what Jesus did. Shalom, peace be with you. There is no greater peace than knowing that our God is still in control. He still guides our lives. And even when we cry out to him, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He hasn't. We always have to remember the next part, but you are holy. And you listen through the cries of your people. He comes to us time and time again that we might trust in him all the more. He guides our lives. And in a world that loves to change, and we may not like it so much, he reminds us that, no, there is one thing that stands sure. I am your rock. I am your salvation. In you, 
and you may put your, your trust in me because it is there that you will find peace, a peace that passes all understanding. And not only that, but I'm going to guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. No matter what happens in your life, I will be there. I will walk with you through it. He gives us guidance and strength from day to day. And in a world where everything's changed, it's nice to know we have one constant. It's Jesus Christ who guides our lives and gives us hope. So be it, Lord. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you brought the fulfillment of all that you had promised from the beginning of time. It's through faith in Christ that, you have been, that we have been saved. You have brought to that peace that passes all understanding into our lives, not only for today, but it is a promise forever and ever and ever. Guide our lives, Lord, that we may place our trust in you. Tell others about who you are, that they might uh, be called to come and follow and to know that peace that only you give. Lord, in your mercy, for it is into your hands, O Lord, that we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.